Hello and welcome back to the Adventures in CRE audio series, Season 2. We are joined today by Jeff Wittenberg. Let's get started. Welcome to the Adventures in CRE audio series. Join Michael Belasco and Spencer Burton as they pull back the curtain on everything commercial real estate and introduce you to some of the top minds in the industry. If you want to take your skills to the next level and be part of a growing community of CRE professionals across the world, this is for you. All right, you guys. Hey, thank you so much for coming back. We're excited to jump into today's topic and to have today's uh, guest. Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much. Wonderful. We're so excited to have you. So we've got uh, Michael Blasco and Spencer Burton here in studio. And Spencer, I'm just going to kind of dish it right over to you, buddy. Yeah, you know, so I'm excited to have Jeff on. Uh, he and I now have known each other for a little bit of time. Um, and I thought he's a great value add for the Adventures in CRE audience, both in terms of his uh, understanding of what real estate employers are looking for, but also how candidates can position themselves well for uh, you know, maximum career success. So just a, qu a quick overview of who Jeff is. He is the managing director and practice leader in K, K Bassman. Uh, he leads strategy team and operations of their construction and real estate practice. Uh, over the course of 20 years at K Bassman, he has had responsibilities for the firm's talent acquisition, training and development, culture, marketing communications, and overall governance. Uh, based in Dallas, uh, Jeff has a long and successful record of helping clients with recruiting, retention, compensation, and other general management challenges. So uh, with Jeff today, we're going to talk really about two topics. Um, the first is the, the general um, landscape for commercial real estate recruiting at, at this juncture in early 2020. Uh, we're also going to talk about the mid-career move. Uh, and so for our uh, listeners and readers who are uh, mid-career, uh, and, and possibly thinking about a change, or maybe they're not thinking about change, but want to understand how to maximize uh, their career potential. We're, we're going to get into that. But, but first, Jeff, um, maybe I'll, I'll kick it back to you and, and, and provide some additional color about you and about the, the, the firm where you work. Sure, sure. Well, first off, thanks so much for having me, um, having me on the podcast. This is great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, K. Bassman was founded in 1981 in Dallas, and uh, we're an executive search firm. And we serve, um, you know, 20 different industries. Everyone is uh, a specialist within their industry. My career started there in 1998, and I've spent uh, the entire time within construction and real estate uh, within that practice. Uh, we have a national footprint. We're the largest uh, practice area within the company. We account for about a third of Kay Bassman's overall revenue and have, uh, have done so historically, you know, for the last couple of decades. So, uh, everything we do is in the, com is in the commercial space. And so on the construction side, our core client can be the commercial general contractor, the specialty contractor, the developer or private equity, really anybody who uh, needs, um, commercial construction management, uh, talent. On the real estate side, our core client could be anybody from the developer, the private equity, the corporate uh, end user. Once again, anybody who needs, you know, that commercial real estate uh, expertise in areas such as development, uh, construction, asset management, property management. Got it. Got it. Uh, so you're representing both the employer and the job seeker. Would that be safe to say? Well, yeah, we, we're a broker, right? Yeah, uh, essentially, sure. okay. we're brokering the relationship. Our client is the uh, is the company okay. that will hire us, and uh, that's who we are, you know, technically contracted with. That's who pays our fee, and um, and our role is really to help that organization grow. Um, and that could be from filling, you know, one position to filling um, to filling multiple, to establishing a, a department or a division or even a new location. Yeah. So, so you have, um, insights into the commercial real estate hiring landscape. Um, your insights are more, are, you're on the front front lines of this. So let's talk about that. Uh, how are things looking today? So we're January, 2020, um, uh, 
who has the upper hand? Is, is it, are they job seekers or, or the companies themselves in your view? Yeah. Well, first off, the market continues to be, um, incredibly robust. I mean, I feel like we've been in this, in this, um, up cycle for, you know, quite some time and, uh, there doesn't seem to be, um, really end any end in sight in terms of the, you know, the good news, right? Yeah. So, uh, the job market, uh, the development market continues, uh, to be great, uh, in terms of who has the upper hand, you know, I'd have to say it's the candidate, you know, we're in what we call a candidate driven market. And the reason for that is because the demand for talent, uh, is far exceeding supply. So, um, you know, for every, um, you know, for every viable experienced um, real estate professional, they're going to have multiple career options um, before them. So uh, without, without a doubt, I'd say uh, the candidate has the upper hand right now. Yeah. So, so as we, let's break that down a little bit. Um, our listeners generally are commercial real estate professionals, either investment pre- professionals, so that may be acquisition, development, maybe asset management, mm-hmm. uh, and then some uh, you know, service professionals, so uh, brokerage and, and investment advisory. Uh, so that would be our core. We, we have a few construction uh, folks, but for the, for largely mm-hmm. speaking, we're, we're on the investment side. So let's, let's kind of uh, look at that. Uh, first, at levels, um, would you find that uh, employers are having a harder time filling a certain level? And I, what I mean by level, right, analyst, associate, VP, director, or managing director. Are, are there certain levels that, that are, they're having more difficulty filling? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it depends on who the company is, right? The larger national firms um, have have an ability to hire, you know, out of college at, at, you know, on large scale, whether it's, you know, at, a, at the undergraduate level or at the MBA level, the smaller, um, the smaller firms, not so much, right? So they are, you know, the smaller firms will tend to look to hire someone who came out of college, went to work at a big firm, right. Yeah. And really, um, uh, develop that foundational experience. And then after, you know, even as, as, you know, early as three to five years out of college, we'll hope to, you know, pluck someone out of one of the larger, more established firms at the mid level. I think everyone, um, I think everyone is, is candidly struggling at the mid and even senior levels. Again, the, the larger wow. firms have, you know, they're in a, they're in a luxurious position because they have such a, 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 you know, a larger group of employees, right. Mm-hmm. At any given level or, you know, functional area. So, um, so they, they're a little bit, you know, in, in, in a better position, but there again, you know, these smaller to mid-sized firms are, you know, putting some, some pretty attractive offers out, you know, taking people away from the larger firm. So there just seems to be a demand at, at every level. And I, I don't think any firm has it, you know, completely figured out. That's, that, you know, that's really interesting. So what, what about job function, uh, asset management, acquisitions, development, is, is there a job function that is especially, um, uh, you know, lacking in talent, meaning, meaning there's a higher demand for, for one over the other. Um, and are there, are there job functions that are, um, if you're a job seeker, especially competitive and difficult to get in right now, because there's not as much space, uh, talk to, uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I can't really point to one area that is, uh, that is hotter than the other. I mean, again, I think, within the areas of, you know, property management, asset management, development, acquisitions, dispositions, I think there's, there's demand, uh, there's demand across the board, right? These firms are, are growing. And as a result of that, you know, they need, they need to increase their bandwidth and they need to, to deepen their level of experience. You know, we've seen, I think, um, and this is probably true of many industries, you know, this, this concept of, specialization. Whereas, you know, once upon a time, if you were a developer, you were, you were a developer, <laughs> you were agnostic, yeah. you, you might develop retail, you might develop commercial office, you might develop, you know, industrial. And, you know, the industry has really gone by way of specialization. 
so uh, these firms aren't looking for just experience within a functional area. They're also looking for that same level of experience and expertise within an asset class. Yeah. I'm really glad you said that. Uh, we have a course in our accelerator where we talk about uh, developing your real estate career. And, and I really drill into this. Uh, I call it deal seasoning, but it, uh, mm -hmm. y y you're seasoning in a property type in, uh, you know, at, at either the GP or the, the LP level, even at, at, in geography, right? Um, your seasoning in a given market is, is incredibly valuable. Um, or, or it makes you more difficult to, to land jobs. So now I'm, I'm glad you said that. So I'm going to throw a little okay. bit of an audible as we have this discussion. Let's talk about compensation. Um, mm -hmm. we, every year we share CEL and Associates uh, annual compensation survey, and it's the most visited uh, <laughs> post on our website. Um, right. and, and so people love hearing about this. I know that um, it's not quite so cut and dry, but um, I have a couple questions around compensation. First off, Sure. What is the premium, roughly, maybe as a percentage, uh, for working at a large institutional firm relative to, say, a, a kind of a mid-tier, uh, mid-market firm? The, the benefit? Um, well, you know, I think, one, it's, it's the, the, the pedigree, all right, that, uh, that everyone appreciates, you know, seeing the big names at, you know, the larger firms. And and the exposure to uh, the training and development practices that you know, many, many of the larger firms uh, have the, the luxury of having, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Whereas the smaller ones just don't. And um, I think to some extent too, just the, the type of deals, the type of, um, you know, of, of opportunities that, that, that a large firm will see and be involved in versus the smaller ones. Right. So there's, there is this notion that someone coming out of a larger firm is going to be, uh, they will have been, you know, better trained, uh, more developed. Uh, they will have seen, uh, you know, perhaps bigger, more complex deals. So as a result of that, you know, they're, they're more experienced and, and more knowledgeable. Yeah. Right. So, in, so I in, think that's the general, you know, that's, that's the general attitude around, you know, the big, uh, we'll call it the big tier one firms. Yeah. And in terms of a, a compensation package, uh, all else being equal position, um, mm. uh, role, all that, uh, are you earning more at one of the large tier one institutional firms than at a, at a midsize company? It's a great question. You know, compensation, um, compensation is probably one of the trickiest things around right now, both, both for the candidate to understand and candidly for the, for the companies to really wrestle with, because again, we've been in such a low unemployment market for so long. I mean, we all know what, uh, you know, the impact that, um, you know, demand has, you know, high demand has on low supply, right? Yeah. Prices, prices rise. And, yeah. um, and I think compensations, uh, compensation has, has, uh, it's been the same there as well. You know, compensation has risen. I, I don't, you know, I don't know if it's risen as, you know, much as a person, you know, from a percentage standpoint as, as, you know, other prices, but, but talent is in higher demand. I think companies are, are paying more. They're having to be more competitive than ever. Um, and interestingly enough, you know, it's the, I think the smaller, in, a, in an odd way, the smaller mid-sized firms, they just have more flexibility, right? To be able to put together um, a customized package as opposed to the larger firms where compensation tends to be a bit more programmatic, right? Um, and again, you know, to your point earlier, one of the points is, you know, this move at the mid-level. So that's, that's oftentimes where we see the compensation jump is someone who's reached the mid-level with a large firm, they make a move to a smaller firm and, and, you know, as a result, they've bettered their compensation, you know, quite potentially bettered their career path as well. So I want to shift a little to the candidate's perspective. Are you finding now, is this, is there a, a general perception from candidates? I know that the tier ones are very attractive, but in terms of what they want to do, are you finding when you find qualified candidates, I know you're 
you probably have a particular job in mind, but are you finding the candidates leaning towards a particular shop, a particular size, you know, a particular, you know, desire to be in a certain, you know, I guess size really, really the, the type of uh, firm. Are you seeing any sort of uh, angle with candidates? I wouldn't say there's a definite trend. I think candidates are really broken up into two, in my mind, into two categories. You've got You've got that corporate, we'll call it the corporate candidate Mm -hmm. where, you know, they, their preference is to be with a, you know, a large, um, a large organization because in their mind, you know, there may be, um, there may be comfort, there may be, you know, safety with a, with a larger organization. They may feel like they have, you know, greater career opportunities because the org chart is much, uh, is much deeper, um, And then you've got the, what I call the entrepreneurial candidate who really wants to be in a, you know, smaller organization where, um, where they have the opportunity to really, you know, feel like they're driving a bigger impact. Right. So it's, it's kind of, you know, the, the, the small fish in a big pond versus the big fish in a smaller pond. So I, I, I don't think there's, there's, there's a trend leaning, you know, towards one or the other. And I think both are great by the yeah. way. Um, I think it really comes down to from a, from the candidates perspective, really understanding, um, you know, who am I really, which, 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 which one of those am I? And, you mm-hmm. know, so often candidates are, are one, but they see themselves as another, <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> right. they'll make that move to the other side of the fence. Um, uh, many times you know, realizing that, you know what, I'm, I'm really not this. And they end up going back to, uh, to the type of firm that they came from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's one thing, you know, um, you know, I emphasize for people in grad school, you know, that internship is so important because you really get that exposure to both sides. Um, you know, for me personally, you know, I went to development after I got out of grad school and, you know, it, it was a typical, you know, one of these tier one companies and, you know, the challenge is, yes, you are seeing, you learn a tremendous amount. You're in very complex deals. You get exposed to a lot of opportunities, but you know, it's kind of what you're pointing to is you do get sort of pigeonholed into a a particular role. Now you're seeing a lot, but you're not touching a lot. Um, and the contrary, you know, when, you know, I in grad school had an internship and was lucky. I showed up on the day and you know, that the head of the acquisitions team quit and I was, they were so small that I happened to be next in line. <laughs> Which was funny. Uh, they were so nimble, right. but they were very prolific. Right. They had a lot of things going on. Uh, and so the exposure I got, even within the couple of months was just incredible. I mean, just the amount of, you know, you're in the smaller shop, the amount of exposure you get now, you know, the, the sophistication of doing, you know, one tremendously complex tower in a premier city is, is totally different than touching on five different projects of maybe it's a, a neighborhood center and, you know, some flex industrial and, but you're touching a lot. So, you know, it really is interesting to get that perspective and they are very different. Your roles and responsibilities are absolutely, you know, they're, they're, they're almost night and day, I would say. So, yeah. So I, I, no, they are, they're, they're, they're very different. And again, I, you know, just to be clear, one, one, I don't think one is better mm-hmm. than the other. They're just Agreed. different. Yeah. Right. Agreed. And, and the good news, you know, it's, it's good for everyone that both exist, right? Because not everybody's cut one way, um, you know, or the other. Right. So, uh, you know, the, the industry, the industry, I think by its nature, um, in, in many respects does tend to be very entrepreneurial, right? I mean, we see many of the small, small, medium sized shops were, you know, founded by someone who started at a big firm you know, mm-hmm. kind of, you know, not too dissimilar from like the tech industry where, you know, once upon a time there was IBM and today there's a bunch of ex IBM people, you know, running other companies. So mm-hmm. I think the real estate industry is, you know, very, very similar. And, and you're absolutely right. You know, and, that, and that's one of the things that, you know, when we talk to candidates, we, we always want to paint a picture of pros and cons because there's never, you know, just pros and there's never, just cons. There's pros and cons to every situation out there. And with the bigger firm, you're right. Um, there, there can be this, this notion that I'm with a big firm and I'm going to do a lot and see a lot. Um, but you're right because they have so many people, they have the ability to, um, to pigeonhole, right. And say, you're really good at this one 
thing. So go do this one thing. And, uh, and, and, you know, the danger is if, if you end up doing that one thing long enough, um, candidly, it, it really can hurt your candidacy when you want to get out of it. Right. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So, yeah. So Jeff, yeah. I, I, I and that, have and, a, and that's a driver I think for a lot of people too, right. With the bigger firms is they start to, they start to feel that. And, um, and they, you know, they, they're like, I get, I got to do something about it because if I don't, I'm going to be, I'm going to be stuck, um, in this one, you know, this one lane and, um, yeah. and I, one, I want to learn more and two, I want to increase my, you know, my value. So, mm-hmm. you know, often, you know, many a times that it, in and of itself is what triggers the, the career move. So uh, I, I have a quick little scenario. So K K Bassman, your your role. I'm I'm curious if you might articulate a little bit about your role because essentially, uh, you guys can play. I think a lot of people when they navigate their career, um, maybe they do think about using services like yours. Maybe they don't. But I wonder if you might um, illustrate for us. You know, when sure. your role when when you go in, what is the potential? You know. What's the landscape look like? What is, I mean, you're essentially a matchmaker giving people opportunity, but how can, can, you know what I mean? (laughs) So maybe what is the benefit of working with someone like you or maybe just cutting and saying, hey, you know what, I'll look for opportunities on my own and do this thing kind of solo. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great question. I appreciate you asking it. So, you know, from the candidate's standpoint, I think the, uh, the benefit to them and, and keep in mind, right. We're, we're offering our services and our, our expertise to the candidate free of charge, right? right? Because they're right. not, they, they don't bear the cost of, uh, of, you know, the transaction, if you will. So I think the benefit to them is one, this is what we do. I mean, we are an expert in this, uh, you know, in, in career, uh, you know, all things career, right? So, uh, so I think just, just the expertise in everything from, you know, how do I put together a better resume to mm-hmm. how do I, uh, how do I, uh, interview more effectively? How do I, um, you know, just navigate through, through the, the, these waters of a career change. Um, how do I know I'm, I'm, you know, basing my decision on, you know, on the right things and having a sounding board, um, and, a you know, a guide, a coach, um, I and, think is extremely and beneficial. Do you help you know, people the other know thing too is we look under the hood of a lot of organizations, right? So it's not just knowledge mm-hmm. in a generic sense of, you know, career moves and, and, but it's, it's also knowledge of the market and not, you know, and, and in, in, in many cases we, you know, we probably, we probably know more than, than many of these companies would like us to know <laughs> yeah. about, you know, what's going on under the hood. Right. So I think we're able to share some information that you're just not going to find on a website. Well, right? and, and, and in that respect, can be really meaningful and impactful. Yeah. In that respect, are, is it kind of like, Hey, you're leaving money on the table or opportunity on the table. Is, is that a, a big part of what you guys do as well? Well, it certainly can be. I mean, again, when, as we help candidates assess the right move and, 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 you know, let's be clear. I mean, money is important. Um, sure. but I always counsel people that money should never be the driver of why you're making a career change because you know, the, the, if that's the case, you're going to, you're going to feel the, you know, the pop, uh, on the, you know, right away, but, but that, that energy, you know, dissipates pretty quickly over time. So, uh, and right now, again, compensation tends to be at the forefront because everybody's well aware that, you know, we're in a, we've been in a sub five, you know, sub 4.5% unemployment market. And, and everybody knows what, again, what that does to prices. Right. Um, so I think again, the benefit to the candidate is, you know, our, just our, our expertise in this interview, interviewing, you know, career management cycle, I think it's our expertise in the space because again, we're not generalists, right? We're experts. We, we spend a hundred percent of our time in this commercial real estate or commercial construction sectors. So we really understand. And by the way, 
uh, we do so geographically to your point earlier, you mm-hmm. know, so my team has, you know, 20 people that covers the country um, from a geographic perspective. So, you know, we can talk about what's going on in the LA market versus what's going on in the Dallas market. And they're very different, obviously. Right. Um, So our knowledge of the market, our knowledge of the companies in that space and, and the culture that these companies have and what they're doing and how they operate. um, And, you know, again, the, the, the benefit of, having feedback from people who are there and who have been at these various companies that again, we can, you know, we can share with candidates again, all in service of helping them make the right decision. Yeah. So, and from a compensation standpoint too, it's about, yeah, right. Absolutely. Helping them negotiate, um, you know, the best package that, uh, that they can, um, still being mindful that, you know, like any marriage, it has to work for both sides, right? So it has to make sense for the company. It has to be uh, compelling and attractive to the employee. And again, we serve in the middle to, to, um, to, to guide both sides and counsel both sides and, you know, in service of making the, not just the match, but, but, you know, the the happy marriage, consummating what hopefully (laughs) will be a long-term happy marriage. Right. Sure. Sure. So, Let's talk strategy again from the perspective of the candidate as they're looking to, and I, it, it's not all about compensation, but um, it's about the optimal career. So let's let's think about the optimal mm-hmm. career um, uh, from the newly graduated uh, um, young analyst to the more, most sen- senior person. Uh, at what stage should that analyst look to make their first move? Um, and then what comes next? Uh, I guess I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, it, is it best to spend sure. two years and then five years and then 15 years? Um, is, is there a, right. a trajectory, just in gen- general, I know I'm, I'm painting a broad brush here, but is there, is there a, a step-by-step process that one should consider as they're, they're thinking about their career? And, and then from that, I'll segue over to the mid-career uh, move uh, concept. But Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. There's, there's definitely not a, you know, one size fits all answer, you know, to that question. I think, I think the, the question that the individual has to be asking themselves, um, I mean, there's really several, you know, first of all, um, am I, you know, am I, am I still being challenged? Am I, am I learning? Right. And am I in a position where, um, where I still have, you know, much to learn and I can do it here. Am I working, uh, you know, under a boss or within a group that I respect and admire and feel like, you know, once again, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm lucky to be here. Right. Um, do I feel like I'm with an organization that's growing because again, opportunity, you know, career opportunity is really being driven by the, the growth and the evolution of the organization. So if I'm with a company that, has hit a plateau and, and really isn't going to be growing again. You know, if, 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 if I'm with a company that has this notion of we're going to maintain where we're at, um, then at some point, you know, I too, am going to hit a, you know, going to hit a ceiling. Right. Um, and then ultimately it's, you know, am I with an organization where I feel like not just I'm learning today, but I have the opportunity to, to take my career further. Right. Whether that's in the, the, the area that I'm in or um, or do I have the ability to move to a different area? So if I'm at in asset management, and I really want to learn property management. Do, do I have the opportunity to do that at this firm? So there's really a lot of questions that go into, you know, the, the, the conversation, if you will. Uh, and, and, you know, money's at the tail end of that. Right. So yeah, oftentimes yeah. we'll get a call from a candidate and they want to you know, discuss their career and, and, you know, they'll start with, uh, with compensation and, you know, we will say, let's back burner that for just a minute and let's talk about these, these other things because, um, sometimes it's easy to lose sight of exactly what you have until you, somebody causes you to really stop and, and look at it. And, and, and I'll tell you, you know, <laughs> we're in the business of obviously helping, you know, helping, uh, people transition to new organizations. And obviously that's how our fees are made, but 
you'd be surprised how often we'll talk with a candidate. And once we really understand, once they share with us, uh, uh, you know, the answers to those questions, you know, we really help them realize that, you know, maybe they're, they're really in the best spot they need to be. And, making a move for what ends up being, you know, not much more money in the grand scheme um, and sacrificing what they have may not be the best decision. Yeah. So, so, so let's imagine that a candidate is in that position. So she's feeling like uh, her career is stalled um, or, or she, she's not being challenged. Uh, She wants to take the Mm -hmm. next step. What should she do? Uh, right. Does she just yeah. start scouring job boards? Um, like, yeah, right. <laughs> she has a job, right? She has yeah. income, so she she's not sure, out there. Sure. But she recognizes that it's time for a change. Uh, does she just she call you? Um, uh, it, what what would you <laughs> right. suggest for yeah. for her? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, first and foremost, I'd say um, let's make sure. You know, when I, I would say you know, how do you know, is this just your, your opinion or, or is it, or is it factual? So what I mean by that is, have you had, have you sat down with your boss and said, this is what I want and this is where I want to go. And this is what I want to learn. Um, do I have the opportunity here? So, you know, oftentimes, you know, people in the absence of information, they'll make up their own. Right. So yeah. I always encourage people to step one is let's get, let's get clarity. Um, around where you're at. I want you to get real clarity around where you're at. Once they do that, if the answer is, okay, it's time to go, um, then there's a lot of different ways to really start that process. We're certainly one, and I think a great one. Um, uh, There are, you know, hopefully the industry groups that, uh, or industry group that this person is a member of. So always encourage people to to join a group because of, you know, all the obvious reasons of networking and and learning that occurs. And I think, um, slowly putting, you know, putting the word out to some trusted, uh, some trusted people that you're, uh, open to considering a change that, you know, that, that has, you know, one, two, three X, X, Y, and Z, or you're considering a change for these reasons. The job boards, um, it's certainly not a bad way. Again, you know, many, many companies are, you know, posting positions today. Um, I think they're a great perhaps indicator of where the demand might be. Um, um, and obviously it's an easy vehicle to, you know, contact, you know, the company, contact the company directly. But I also think too, um, being a bit more strategic makes sense. So for instance, if there's a desire, uh, to continue your experience in a particular asset class, like for instance, you know, multifamily has been, uh, is super hot and, you know, has been and continues to be super hot. And if the, if one of the things that's important to you say, gosh, you know, I really want to, I really want to grow my career in multifamily, then, it's a matter of really identifying, you know, who are the players multifamily space in this particular market and, you know, to some extent categorizing them between the, you know, here's the top half and here's the bottom half of the market. And that's, again, that's a lot of the value that we can bring because we understand that already. Right. Yeah. And, um, and being very strategic in who we approach. So it's, we're not just approaching a company because they posted a certain position, but we're approaching a company that is in the asset class that we want to be in. We're approaching a company that, you know, is on a growth trajectory that, that we want to be part of. Um, so again, I don't think, I think it's a multi pronged approach to, um, to the market. Again, I think we're a great, that's, you know, we, we can offer a great benefit to the individual again because of our knowledge of the market and, you know, in that regard. Um, but even somebody who's been out of school for just, you know, a couple of years, you'd be surprised the, you know, the people that they have, that they may have met along the way that they can leverage. So I always tell people, you know, your network uh, is probably bigger than you might even, than you might give it, you know, uh, credit for. Um, And you should leverage it. And then of course, if they, if they haven't been out of school too, too long, there's always, you know, the alumni association that once again has a lot of power to it. Right. So again, a lot of different um, parts of, that make up, you know, the strategy of how do I make a move from the point A where I am today to the, 
you know, to the point B. Um, and I, I, I just caution people, you know, don't just make a convenient jump um, because it's easy to get the phone call from a buddy who says, Hey, you know, we're hiring, you should come look over here and, you know, we're paying a lot or whatever the case may be. Uh, and then because it was convenient and it could happen quickly, you know, the move is made, but that, that doesn't mean that it was the right move. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jeff, this has been absolutely phenomenal. I think, uh, kind of in summary, if you were to, I mean, the, the current market that we're in, okay. What would be a key piece of advice for job seekers and, you know, career aspirers? What would be something that you might say kind of imparting final conclusion of, of uh, how people can really um, take their career to the next level and then what they might do to potentially reach out to you? So I'd say, you know, have, have as much dialogue as you can with your current higher ups to really understand where the company is going and where you can go within it. So first and foremost, like I said earlier, I think you got to have, you know, that um, level of understanding. The other thing is no matter how happy quote unquote, you may feel you are, it never hurts to have the conversation, expand the network, right. um, take a peek of again, what's going on in, in, if it's in your, if it's in your market, then it's, you know, what's, what's happening at your competitor. Right. So the act of, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'm really happy where I'm at. Why would I want to go, you know, talk with this company? Well, because one, you don't know how happy you are or how good you have it until you have something to compare it to. Mm, that's true. The second is, um, again, it's an opportunity to, you know, expand your network and, it's an opportunity to learn a bit more about, you know, the competition. So the other piece of advice is, is really be open to the conversation, right? Be open to the possibility that no matter again, how happy you may feel you are, which is great. Um, there's a lot of, you know, cool, uh, really cool opportunities, uh, and really cool companies out there that, um, you just don't, you, you just don't know about. The other thing I would say is, you know, from a recruiter perspective, you know, the, the, the market is, is red hot. Uh, these candidates are getting calls from, you know, recruiters from literally all over, you know, the globe. And I think like any industry, there are good companies, uh, in that industry and there are some not so good companies in that industry. So my advice to everybody is, um, if you can develop a relationship with a recruiter uh, that's with one of the better firms that really knows their stuff that you just, you know, one is an expert, but two is somebody that you just connect with and trust that you feel will have your best interest at heart. If you can develop a relationship with that recruiter or maybe a couple of recruiters along those lines and maintain those relationships throughout career, your career, I think, I think you'll find it to be unbelievably beneficial because a lot of these candidates are going to, they're at some point they're going to go from candidate to client, right? I mean, yeah. they're going to reach a point in their career where now they're the boss and they're doing the hiring. So all of a sudden, you know, that recruiter relationship, whereas once upon a time it benefited you uh, personally as a candidate now can benefit you as the boss and helping you grow your, you know, your group or, or, you know, your company. Uh, um, so I, you know, and just be, it's not all about the money. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah sure. It's just not, there's a lot of other things. And I think the older, uh, you get in life, um, hopefully the wiser we, we have become, we've come to that realization that, you know, there, there are other things that are really priceless that are, that are, that are you know, very difficult to put a, attach a dollar amount to, but are really, really um, important, more important again than, you know, than a, than a few extra bucks. I think all of us, I think everybody makes, will make at least one, one of those, um, mistakes in their career where, you know, they made a jump, uh, for the money and, you know, they were able to maybe skip a couple, you know, one or, or a couple of, um, uh, of tax, you know, <laughs> brackets, <laughs> right? <yeah. laughs> uh, tax brackets, you know, um, uh, and in some cases that works out great. And in a lot of cases, you know, it is the realization of man, 
boy, that was a mistake. And, and you learn from it. Yeah. And that I think feeds into the wisdom later in life of, man, I made that mistake. I jumped for the money alone, you know, once before, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to really, you know, look hard at, you know, at these other, at these other areas. Um, so, you know, ultimately be proactive. Uh, I think that's, that's really, you know, the key. It's like, you know, be proactive with your health. Don't get in the gym, you know, only when, when you absolutely have to, right. I mean, be proactive with your career, be proactive with your learning, be proactive with your, you know, growing your network, um, and growing your, you know, your knowledge base. And, uh, hopefully if the, if the organization that you're with is, uh, is such that you can achieve your, you know, career goals and wants, then the beauty is you never have to leave. Even better. Um, yeah. yeah. But if the point does come where you decide, okay, it, it is finally time, uh, being, you know, having a, having a strong resume, uh, being well networked, having key relationships, uh, with a recruiter being one of those, I think, I think will end up being, you know, very beneficial. Yeah. I, I, I think that's great advice. So let me, let me finish by saying this. So, uh, I met Jeff, uh, through one of his colleagues, Tucker Wells. Um, and the reason I invited, uh, in fact, I invited Tucker and Jeff on and Tucker's on a cruise, uh, is it his honeymoon, Jeff? Or, or uh, <laughs> no, no, uh, no, not honeymoon. He's still available for all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but he's cr- he's cruising this weekend, um, and so uh, he wasn't on. But the reason I invited him on, and th- there are a lot of recruiters out there, right? Um, I was so impressed with the way that Tucker's helped um, adventure our adventures and CRE readers. Uh, he takes calls um, and and helps them without any expectation of anything in return. And I mean, uh, Michael, right? There's uh, a half dozen people or more that I can just think off the top of my head that uh, Tucker's got on the phone with and and helped those individuals. And uh, they ended up finding jobs, you know, not not necessarily through uh, through Tucker. And and so I, I was so impressed with that. I wanted to get. Uh, Jeff on the call and 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 really hear his insights because they're 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 very much the types that uh, a type of individuals who who were looking to help um, and uh, you know I, I'm sure I mean we're, we're you know we all have to make a living um, but they have they have a um, and I don't want to speak <laughs> for them but my impression of uh, of Kay Bassman and and Jeff and Tucker is that. Uh, they're very much about giving back first. And so that's, that was very impressive to me. So uh, Jeff, thank you. you Thank you for that. that. That's that's always been super important. No, I thank you for that. That's, that's always been very important for us. You know, we, we play the long game, if you will. And, and we're, you know, we're all part of the same, you know, tight knit community. And, and uh, so, you know, we feel like, you know, everything that we, you know, we give, uh, we get back, in return. Sometimes it's monetary, but, um, but sometimes it's not and that's okay. So I appreciate you acknowledging that. All right, Jeff. Hey, thank you so much for being here. And to the listeners, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. I have, and we will see you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Adventures in CRE audio series. For show notes and additional resources, head over to www.adventuresincre.com slash audio series. Would you like to learn real estate financial modeling in a matter of weeks and do it with zero guesswork? If so, the ACRE Accelerator is for you. The Accelerator is a step-by-step case-based program designed to teach you exactly what you need to know and in the order you need to know it, so you can gain both the knowledge and experience to take your career to the next level. To see if the Accelerator is right for you, go to www.adventuresincre.com slash accelerator.